The thing about marathon training is like, no one rep you do is, is that hard, but you know, can you do that for two hours? Find out. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. No, too bad. So the US 10K champs uh, was about four weeks ago now. I uh, went into that race a little unprepared or a little, didn't really know what, what to expect of it. Uh, I was on, I think, week four of, of marathon training at that point, and a pretty, pretty good field. Um, so I knew my best bet in a race like that um, was to really be aggressive on the front end. Jacob putting in a nice surf right now. A lot of times you can get a a gap on the roads and it's kind of hard to make it up. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. He doesn't want to let Jacob get away so easily in the first mile here. Ran a 231 second K on this big downhill and kind of led, led through the halfway point. This is a $500 bonus for the first runner. I think I saw 1419. We had just gotten like a pretty big gap on the field. Um, so I was able to hold on for, for eighth place in that race, which for where I was at, I thought that was a good, uh, Kind of a good starting point. And two weeks after the 10K, we went to the, the 10 Mile Champs in Minnesota. It was only two weeks difference, but I feel like I was much more prepared going into the 10 Mile. Kind of the same thing. We went out, went out pretty hard. I tried to hang with the leaders as long as I could. Uh, we came through the five mile mark uh, around 23:20, which is about as fast as I ever ran for 8K in college. You know, having that being the halfway point of the race is, is kind of exciting on the roads. I definitely struggled the second half of that race though. Uh, don't think I was quite prepared to hold it for the full 10 miles. That being said, I don't think I would have raced it any other way. So right after that race, uh, I found this to be true um, a lot of times. I came back to Flagstaff and, and got right back to work and it seemed like right after that 10 mile race, everything kind of flipped in training. I was feeling better than I ever had, running more miles than I ever have. Workouts were just clicking. Um, we had some really, really good sessions with Matt Lano and I, and yeah, I think I kind of needed that, those two races to kind of kickstart the marathon training, you know, they were on week four and, and week six, and then we had like a really big nine or ten weeks to work just on, on the marathon, and yeah, training, training's going well right now. 25 quarters here on the uh, loop up here in Baderville, so uh, we got a nice loop, we'll change directions every every four reps and uh, just trying to get the legs moving faster, a little bit more uh, of a neuromuscular type uh, adaptation to, to hopefully then help the, the tempo runs feel, feel easier, feel smoother, feel more relaxed. Um, that's the whole idea here of, of doing some, you know, faster than race pace type work. Coming along really well. I think uh, last week was probably the best I've seen him look, the most relaxed I've seen him look. Um, you know, the, the double threshold workout where we did 2K, 3K in the morning and then afternoon we did 1Ks. That was the best I've seen in the, in the whole build up and just in terms of being relaxed, in terms of running smooth, um, not pressing. Uh, it's just coming to him a little bit more natural now, which is good to see. We have still have tons of time, so we don't need to be getting in a hurry right now. Um, you know, with, with CIM as, as, as the goal, um, yeah, we, we have tons of time still. Starting to get really fit. I think this is this is the third or fourth time we've done it, but it's the first time we've done it uh, in the morning. The rest of the time we've been doing uh, like a longer threshold session in the morning and then we come back and do 20 quarters on the track. <clears throat> this was about the same pace. Uh, took a little bit less rest. We've been going off of uh, <coughs> like 40 to 45 seconds. Today we probably averaged close to 35. We did uh, 25 quarters. We probably averaged right around, most of them were 69, 70. Uh, it's kind of right where we want to be. Uh, it's been great having Matt. Uh, he was a little bit ahead of me training-wise, uh, just because he's just focused on New York first. Uh, so his marathon's a, a month earlier. So when I was getting back into shape, he was uh, already in pretty good shape. So he dragged me around quite a bit, 
which was helpful and uh, now I think our, our fitness levels are kind of evened out and yeah we're working really well together. And then this weekend we're going to Baltimore to pace a marathon at the Baltimore Run Fest. So we just got back from Baltimore. Uh, we got to go to Under Armour headquarters in, uh, in Maryland and then uh, they, they put on the big Baltimore Run Fest and Matt and I paced, paced the marathon. So uh, we paced a 230 group, ran 22 miles at, at 540 pace. Uh, with the warm up and cool down, it was like a 25 mile long run workout for us. And I uh, was really happy with the way that went and you know, got to be a part of Under Armour and you know, go to the headquarters. We all stayed for two or three days and kind of got to meet a lot of the you know, innovation team and got to meet with a lot of the sports marketing people and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, this morning we did six miles of work out on Lake Mary, two mile, one mile, two mile, one mile. Uh, and then came home, ate, went and got a massage, came back here, got some work done, folded some laundry, and now uh, kind of going through like my pre-run routine and uh, getting some chores done at the same time. Yeah, I've been just heating my foot up in the uh, in the bucket for a while now. My like Achilles and like peroneal tendon and stuff have uh, I guess give me like a little bit of issues. Just been like like rather tight, but I don't know. I soak my foot in hot water for like ten minutes, and then do a bunch of rehab drills, and pretty much good to go after that. Uh, so yeah, that's how I spend the. 20 or 30 minutes before a run, getting ready is. We're at the track for our second session. We're gonna do three sets of mile two by 800. We've been doing uh, the double workouts, double threshold, like every nine-ish days. And basically just allows us to get like more work in. So if like, we typically do like, you know, like eight to 10 miles of threshold work, we kind of get 12 to 14 miles of work in, uh, which just kind of like accumulates over time. And then basically just allows you to get like an extra workout in, which has been nice. I did a couple of them before Chicago last year, but I didn't do it like very consistently. I just did, I kind of did four of them like spaced out, but yeah, we've been super consistent with it so far. And each one's gotten a little better. Yeah, three mile sets. 88. Yeah, just three sets. Mile You're 88. going 60s between 60, 60, and then 90 after, after the, the second, second eight. eight. Yep. 455, five minutes, and 225 down to 220. Yeah. Ballpark? Yeah. Hey, actually, hold up. I was on data <laughs> screen uh, settings. My bad. Huh? I was still on, like, in the settings. I'm turning my auto lap off. for the day. <coughs> this morning we averaged 458 and rough math that was about 450, 451 average for another six miles. Everything on either a minute or 90 seconds rest. Pretty good day. 7,000 feet. <coughs> 
24 total in the day? Yeah, it'll be 24 on the day after it cool down. So within like each nine day like training cycle, we've kind of rotated. Uh, so workouts are every three days. Uh, we've done like one faster workout. It's been kind of like, you know, 5K, 10K, half marathon uh, type of session. And then the next session will be a double threshold session. And that's something that I experimented with a little bit in the past, uh, but I haven't ever done it, you know, every nine days as consistently as, as this before. And it just allows you to get a lot of volume and getting a lot of like 23, 24 mile days with uh, 12 to 13 miles of work, uh, kind of in that like half marathon to marathon pace, which doing that up here at, at 7,000 feet, I think is gonna benefit me greatly when we drop down to, to race at sea level. And then the third session has just usually been uh, some type of long run workout or just really steady long run, uh, kind of callousing the body to, to get ready for you know a full 26.2. I think that's one thing I didn't have in the Chicago build was uh, some of these long runs. Uh, so that's, it's good to know we've been consistently hitting those. I think I'm gonna have like a really consistent like 10 to 12 week block where I'll be kind of between 110 and 120 and I probably won't go much over that. Um, but I think if I can just like consistently click those off for the next couple of weeks and you know, I've already done it for the past, past three weeks, uh, I think it's gonna, gonna bode well for me mileage wise. Four by two mile, Camp Verde, 3,000 feet. Too fast. 442, 442. Okay. I'll probably try to hit 930. Come on, Jacob. Let's go, Jacob. Woo! Thanks, Rick. Right. Try to do it really even. You said that was 444, 444? Yeah. yeah. All might have been within a second or two. catching up to you very fast. Like, you must be running pretty well. It's funny because I thought the opposite. <laughs> I was like, oh, he, I ran 444 and he already <laughs> caught me. 12. So that means 25, so it's three. So average 443 pace. Sure. For eight miles. It's good. Yeah. That was one I had circled for a while. I wanted to get up for that, that session? One. Yeah. Yeah. That's that what nice. we kind of talked about. I was like, let's hit this one because it's the last hard, it's the last like, non-marathon hard thing before Indy half really I think I'm doing some A's and fours like six days out but I'm gonna keep that one pretty tame the first two miles felt the hardest mm -hmm. that whole workout with marathon training definitely agree with that. first 20 for 20 percent 25 percent of every workout I thought I was in trouble feel I like shit hurt. and then once you hit halfway you start feeling good I think we would have been in trouble if we started faster than 940 I don't know if I could have done I that. definitely would have been. Yeah. Oh, well, well, Under Armour shoot. Right here we have the uh, 2021 prototype that I've been using because I like it a lot. Mocking a threes for all the mileage. Uh, everyday trainer. We have some uh, 
forget what this stuff is called. <laughs> Emily Durgan gave it to me. I think it's from Momentus. Good carbs and electrolytes. Oh man, yeah, my last, I really have done almost all of my marathon buildups since 2018, just alone. Uh, so this one, having JT, I was kind of like, uh, for months before he kind of switched back to the marathon when he was doing track stuff, I was just kind of like chomping at the bit to get him out here. And um, it's just been so nice to have a partner out here to do, you know, to share all the work with, to share all the miles with when you're putting in, you know, all the 120, 130 mile weeks. Um, it just wears you down doing it alone and having him out here um, sharing the pacing, uh, just sharing conversation, friendship, camaraderie when you're out here doing hard stuff. Uh, it's, it's a complete game changer for me and it has helped me to get back like in the mentality where I actually want to, <laughs> where I actually want to be doing this again. Cause for a while I really was kind of questioning it. Yeah. Really good session <clears throat> down in Camp Verde. Uh, almost back up to Flagstaff now. But yeah, this is kind of like the last uh, really hard, like kind of half marathon session before Indy. Uh, so I wanted to get after it a little bit today. Uh, game plan was just kind of start at 940 and, and work down to, to 920 for eight miles of work. And uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it went really well. Um, felt really good kind of in that nine, 920 to 930 range. Uh, just kind of like low 440s. So yeah, it's always nice to drop down to 3,000 feet and run a bit faster. Uh, we do a lot of stuff at like, you know, 450 to five minute pace up here and at 7,000 feet. Uh, so it's nice to kind of get that like quicker effort down in Camp Verde every once in a while. Is that half marathon pace or what kind of pace were you hitting? Yeah, I'd say it's about it was about half marathon effort, maybe a little bit quicker. Every workout, I get a little bit more confident. Uh, you know, I want to run incredibly well at, at CIM, and a marathon is so unpredictable that's, you know, it can be a tough event even if you're super prepared. But uh, yeah, I think every 20 plus mile day I walk away from, every workout I walk away from, uh, when I'm, you know, physically and mentally like on it, and I can get the most out of myself, I think I get a little bit more confident each time we inch closer to, to the start line. Yeah, we've kind of picked all these races fairly like strategically. They kind of just fell into our lap that way where, you know, it was the 10K and then a couple weeks later it was the 10 mile. And then a couple weeks uh, after that, I'll do a half marathon. And then the half is a month out from, from the CIM. Uh, so it's kind of like a perfect build uh, going from, from one to the next and being able to get in, you know, a solid like two or three week training block between each race. We're in the gym like two days a week usually, uh, doing all kinds of different stuff and then I usually do two more days of like core and ancillary and mobility and like hip strengthening stuff as well. Uh, so like the main thing for me in this marathon build is like I'm putting in a ton of miles and like some really high volume, uh, definitely running you know the most I ever have before so a lot of stuff pops up naturally. So like the weight room for me is a really good place to uh, kind of focus on those weaknesses. Uh, so like do a lot of hip stuff, a lot of glute stuff. Uh, I've kind of had some like adductor hip flexor stuff flare up. So like you'll see we do a lot of stuff kind of like focus on the, like the pelvic girdle. Uh, and then also do a lot of stuff for kind of like calf Achilles, uh, eccentric type stuff to, to help with those issues as well. I think strength and Mobility are both good, but people kind of do them like separate. So a big thing for me is like, I want to be strong through ranges of motion and kind of, you know, be a master of, master of movement, if you will. Oh uh, yeah, I guess last episode I was having some like back into my glute issues. Uh, I think all that's like really come around and also my seven smoke Achilles stuff. I've been doing a lot of shockwave and then just a lot of strength work uh, and yeah things are coming along 
fairly well. I think we're right on pace. The last couple workouts have been going really good. Uh, this weekend, I'll be racing the half in Indy. That'll give us like a really good uh, checkpoint. I'm not really sure what the field is gonna look like, but I'm just treating it as kind of like a dress rehearsal to get ready for the marathon. Uh, obviously we'll run like faster than marathon pace. Uh, I really think I'm in shape to run like a good, a good half, but more importantly, the focus for me in Indy is gonna be like just actually racing the field. Uh, whoever's there on the starting line, uh, running a smart, patient race and uh, yeah, I, mean, I wanna win it, so we'll see how that goes. The last workout you filmed was the four by two mile. Uh, we averaged 9.26 for four by two miles. And then came off of that and did uh, a 23 mile long run with, uh, we did three by five miles with one mile float. So the workout section was, was 18 miles long. Uh, average 503 pace for the three by five miles and then around like 6.10 for the, for the floats. Uh, and that was a really good one because I got to practice like fluids. Uh, I just did it on a three mile loop over and over and over. Um, and also got to sync up with Matt, uh, kind of one of his last workouts. Uh, he did uh, two sets of the five miles with me. Coming off that workout, I was like really confident. Uh, and we went and did a track session a couple days after that. And I, mean, I did a track session that, you know, I think would have been difficult for me to do when I was in like really good uh, 10K shape last year. Um, we did breakdowns, so we did uh, 1,200, 600, 400, four sets of that. Uh, kind of running like 69s and then 66s and then 63, 62s. And then uh, this morning actually was kind of like the last real workout before Indy. Uh, we did a 10 mile tempo that was broken up into uh, four by two mile, with half mile float. Uh, yeah, so for the 10 miles, average 511 up here at, at 7,000 feet. Uh, average basically right under five minute pace uh, for the four by two miles. And then all the floats were kind of uh, 550 to, to six minute pace. So I think I'm in a really good spot and I just gotta like really rest and, and focus on recovery uh, heading into the weekend. But I'm definitely looking forward to, to racing Indy and you know, I, I wanna go and try to win Indy and, and run a fast time, but I think you know, even more important to that, it's like getting myself into that race atmosphere uh, one last time. It's it's really kind of like my last race dress rehearsal before before CIM when all the chips are on the table. Workouts right now, like nothing has been incredibly like flashy or you know jump off the paper at you. But I think you know every three days I've been putting in a really good session, and I'm definitely happy with with where I'm at with uh, six weeks to go. Yeah, one thing about marathon training is like you really find your outer limits, I guess, uh, your physical limits, your mental limits. Like, it's a tough sport, but being in a place like this, surrounded by you know good company that, that comes with with Flagstaff, uh, yeah, I got nothing to complain about. I love I love it, and uh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it until I can't anymore. <laughs>